Welcome back to Chamber Exchange, a TV show. I want to thank Bank Hometown for making the show happen. And here in our final segment, I'm pleased to have my colleague at the Chamber with us, David Sullivan, who's the Director of Economic Development and Business Recruitment. And David, uh, before we get into the specifics of the ADU ordinance, which is Accessory Dwelling Unit Ordinance that the Council passed this past Tuesday, um, maybe a little bit of history about kind of our work at the Chamber on issues of housing. In, in 2019, uh, the Chamber hired a team to do with some financial support uh, from the Worcester Business Development Corporation. We did a very detailed study uh, about the housing needs, recognizing the growth of the area, the financial pressures uh, on people with costs uh, increasing, uh, and rolled out that year-long study uh, at an event, our Game Changers Business Conference, an event where we really put together panels, brought in experts in housing, and put out the data and the information, which is available on our website right now. But the sum and substance of it was we need housing of all different types in Worcester and the region if we're going to meet the growth uh, and keep a level of affordability. Yeah, uh, so we rolled out that study in 2019. Right. Uh, and obviously a lot changed even in the year ensuing 2019, but in the past four years a lot has changed. Um, and in our housing study originally, the uh, the findings were really based on a population projection that our economist who did the study um, he predicted that Worcester would reach 200,000 residents in 2030 mm -hmm. and we hit that mark and exceeded it the very next year with the census results in 2020 so uh, our population growth was really explosive over the past decade and um, uh, we haven't built enough housing to keep up with that, and that's not you, you know unique to Worcester. That's it's a ma you know as we see it's a Massachusetts problem. People could argue uh, it's been a, a national problem. Yes, it definitely has. It definitely has, and it's the number one priority for the state and the new Healy Driscoll administration, the right. governor as well, um, and uh, the housing secretary, who many of us in Worcester know, Ed Augustus, our former city manager. He was tapped by. Governor Healy to, to lead this strategy. And, and a new secretariat. And a new, create. brand new secretariat to address housing as a priority number one issue. So in Worcester, we're, we're in lockstep with what they're trying to do in terms of prioritizing housing production. Um, part of that, and what you mentioned in the study, was trying to find creative solutions to produce more housing because we haven't been doing enough of that. And the housing we've also used that we used as a tool, I mean, in addition to having that information out for the public, we also used that study actively to meet with housing developers, uh, a number of whom cited that study as to why they're yep. investing and in actually building apartments as we speak, both on the affordable and market rate side. Yeah, it's been a very useful blueprint to help developers and help the community orient to how we should be approaching housing production, right. which is we need more of it and we need all of it, right. essentially. And, and I think we're singing on the same song sheet as the state as well with this, and um, accessory dwelling units is one piece of this, one mm -hmm. tool in, in the toolbox, if you will. Um, because we've we've done a lot recently in terms of inclusionary zoning um, and our uh, HDIP policy, the Housing Development Incentive Program. The city, City Hall, has rolled out a bunch of different programs to support affordable and income restricted housing and right. public housing and um, folks who are struggling with homelessness. So there's a, a full gamut from, all the way from public housing all the way up to market rate uh, where we have all these different tools right. that f slot in and accessory dwelling units is one yeah, of those. Yeah, and, that, and that's uh, something, you know, that uh, just came up for the council this past week and maybe you could just talk a little bit about what, what the proposed, the recommendation from the city manager's team to the council. There, uh, there was involvement uh, in debate on the council, you know, leading up to this, also the planning board, uh, community conversation, and ultimately the council took a vote this past Tuesday. Yeah, so ADUs have been more of a topic of conversation in the past year or so in Massachusetts, and um, Worcester has kind of taken it and run with it. It started with the planning board and city council, really pushed that, and the city administration put out an ordinance that um, was approved um, uh, this past Tuesday pretty overwhelmingly. So uh, essentially what it allows is, you know, when we talk about accessory dwelling units, just for anybody who doesn't know, essentially... Yeah, what is it? Uh, it's essentially an in-law apartment um, is sometimes what it's called. It's an attached unit, a miniature sort of independent housing unit on a residential building, or it could be detached as well. Think about, you know, a, a small apartment above a garage or something like that, or a finished basement with its own bathroom and kitchen right. and facilities. Um, so it's not... Uh, 
groundbreaking sort of thing. You're sort of using the existing property to right. supplement housing production. And um, importantly, what it does is it allows, uh, it, well, it frees up housing in the market. So if you're trying to downsize, if you, for whatever reason, you know, if you're a senior and you're retired and you're looking to downsize from a full single family home, you move in with your family uh, in an ADU, uh, it could be a young person who, uh, you know, is still kind of living with mom and dad, but wants to be a little bit on their own, um, things like that. So it's- And those are real. I mean, those are real situations real. that families deal with, you know, every day. You know, you got, you know, someone who's in a big three, four bedroom single family or, uh, you know, living in, in a, in a, in a three-decker with four bedrooms and renting and, you know, by themselves, the ability to have a level of kind of privacy and independent living close or next to, to, to family members or, or even, you know, renting from someone you might know, um, that then frees up those apartments and those houses for, for families and individuals that, that can fill them. Yeah, and that's, that's really been a key, especially for the home ownership market, is we, we simply don't have enough single family homes and there's only maybe a dozen that are selling you know, in a year in Worcester in a city of 200,000 people, which is it's a real problem. So uh, that is sort of a safety valve and a release to free up some more homes for first time home buyers and, and young people. Um, and, and it's important to note that the, this is part of the state's strategy as well. And, right. and Secretary Augustus rolled out a $4 billion plan with the governor over the next five years with all these different policy proposals to try and address right. housing production. And that was a key part of it, was allowing ADUs in every municipality in every zone. Um, so again, Worcester is kind of uh, a page ahead of, of the state in, in terms of that. Um, and we're trying to make sure that we're prepared for when that comes down the pipeline. So that's the housing bond bill, uh, which the, the Affordable Homes Act, Affordable yes. Homes Act, which which the uh, has money for programs and new programs, but also some some proposed uh, legislative and, and statute changes to kind of, again, facilitate and accelerate housing development. Uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, have talked about you know better utilization of kind of state owned assets to, to kind of uh, help with the move the, uh, the development and creation of housing. So really, it's going to be a, Interesting to see how quickly this can move, and the legislature, I think, has talked about the importance of it, too. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're really excited to see how that proceeds, and um, it just about ADUs and, and yeah, Worcester and, a little and, bit and, more and so, the, part, yeah, maybe we can get back to that just in, in terms of, you know, there was different proposals that were out there, but ultimately, yeah. um, you can maybe share what was the decide the deciding. Yeah, uh, there were, there was some discussion about the regulations and how it should be enabled. Um, you don't, I don't think anybody really wants an ADU to pop up on every single lot in every home in the city. Right. Um, and that's not what's going to happen. Um, there are certain regulations in place, and the big one is that uh, there has to be an owner occupant on the property. So if you have your own single family home and you build a detached or attached ADU. Um, you have to be living in one of those units in order for that ADU to be built. Right. So uh, if you're thinking about like a, a developer who owns a few three-deckers across the city, they can't build an ADU uh, in one of those three-deckers that they don't live in. Right. So that's an important one, the most important one. The other one is it can't exceed 900 square feet in size. Um, and another thing which is uh, helpful zoning sort of um, amendment is that you don't have to build additional parking right. for the ADU, which is helpful so you don't end up with parking lots in every um, part of the city. So, uh, and, and the, it doesn't require special permit is an important thing. Um, so they're allowed by right throughout the city. Right. You don't have but, to but, but by right, uh, th you know, it doesn't mean someone can just maybe tomorrow because the no. vote took place, go and do this. They're going to have to work with the code department, et cetera, and make sure. You still need your building permit. You right. still need to go through um, internal review with the city. You still need to do all the usual things, but there's not an extra layer on top that right. there would be otherwise. Right, you don't have to go to planning board or zoning board or anything like that. Now it's just really kind of your, your builder, your architect, and, and the building department, right? Yeah, Right. exactly. So uh, uh, with that, that vote, has the city indicated how quickly they're going to put out regs or what the word is or process, or is the vote... Uh, that, that's all. Yeah, well, 
it'll take some some time to implement and I know that the city's executive office of economic development which kind of resides under the city managers purview they're already trying to roll out some things like a rental registry and mm -hmm. other enforcement measures so they're already working on a lot of stuff in terms of assessment and enforcement for code so this will be a part of that as they roll out the the ADU ordinance and um, there'll be some some sort of reflection in the next year or so to see how many units of ADUs have or been create, produced, yeah. um, how that has supplemented our existing housing policies and uh, maybe tweaking or amending the zoning ordinance based on the feedback that the city receives. Right, right. And, you know, in terms of economic activity, uh, you know, people in our construction trades, uh, you know, opportunities, activities that, that are good for not only them, but mm -hmm. our, our hardware, supply stores, et cetera. So, so an economic, uh, uh, incentive here to do this beyond just housing but also creating economic activity and, and jobs yeah i mean the bottom line is we want people to be able to live and work in worcester we want to create jobs and so we're excited to see that we're finding these creative ways to create more housing for the city good stuff well david thanks for giving us the update of that vote and what it means uh, and the process going forward thank you all right and stay thank you for being uh, with us on this uh, edition of chamber exchange the tv show and as always want to thank bank hometown for being our sponsor